Welcome back everyone. Today we are going to boost a battery in a car. Uh, we have a vehicle outside. The battery is not powerful enough to turn over the engine. But before we do that, we we're going to do a quick introduction to batteries and a couple of booster cables that I have here that I'll bring up. So this is your standard car battery, not terribly big. It has two posts. Now there would be connectors on here with wires. You'll notice that one post says negative, the other post says positive. And another identifier in these is the negative post is always just a bit smaller than the positive post. The intention here is that is designed so that you wouldn't cross these up when you were connecting this into the vehicle you could cause quite a bit of electrical damage by putting the wrong posts on if you were swapping out this battery. So let's pull up a couple of booster cables and show you some examples. Okay, so we went back in the shop today and we pulled out three examples of booster cables. A good pair, a not so good pair, and quite frankly, a poor pair. So I wanna show you examples of what that means. So this thin cabled guy here, not connected, we can see that we've actually got damage on these connections. If you have a pair like this, my recommendation, throw them in the garbage. These are dangerous. You've got exposed wires on each of these. That's going to take down the connection point. They have a small brass connection, pretty good spring on this, but the overall set is so weak and so damaged that I would never use these and never recommend using these. These are dangerous, so throw them out if you've got a pair that are damaged like this. You don't want exposed wires on any of your booster cables. So we have another set here. We've got a thicker gauge wire, which is really important because we are trying to draw the power from one vehicle's battery over to the other vehicle in a manner that will allow the other vehicle to start. One of the concerns with this particular set is our cable clamps. So what you can see in these cable clamps is they are bent, firstly, and they are terribly corroded and rusted. So this is going to reduce the connection and reduce the electricity that will travel between the two battery sets. So if you have a set like this, I would recommend hitting these with a wire brush, some sandpaper, trying to get the rust and corrosion down from them. Again, they've got a nice strong uh, spring on them, so that's good for creating connection. But because of that rusting, these are less than ideal as well. So we're gonna pull up a brand new set to give you an example of what that looks like. All right, so here's an example of a brand new pair. Um, these are a really high gauge, really thick wire. They have brand new connections. You can see there's no corrosion. They have multiple access points. So this is quite a unique set that's cut back so that you can get in and grab a, a small area and we'll show you outside when we do that. Um, so this is a ideal set for, for boosting. So we're gonna show you what this looks like in terms of connection. It's pretty straightforward. But a quick recommendation, I don't want to touch this positive when I have these two touching. So we need to separate before we connect any booster cable, we need to separate these. So pro tip generally, I like to take the positive and snip it gently on the bottom of the cable. Now this creates separation because these things are banging around and we know that that's separated even if we drop it. We know they're separated and there's no risk. You don't want to cross these over. Once you add power to this line, you're going to charge this line with electricity. So you want to be very, very careful. We're looking at our positive terminal in this case, and we're going to put our red on the positive terminal. We get it on and you want to give it a bit of a wiggle. And the reason for that is these are lead posts and you want to have the connection here in the clamp sort of dig in a little bit to get the best connection. We'll put the negative on and we have these connected perfectly. These now are live, the red especially. So we could then go and put these on 
the battery that we're looking to charge or the one that we're trying to get the charge from. So let's take this outside and show you how it works in a real setting. So we, here we are in a 2022 Nissan NV200. It's been parked for quite a while. Got a very cold day, so it's about uh, minus 15 Celsius today. Uh, and because it's been parked, the battery may be just a bit weak. And you can see that it's not going. So our first step here, so we're gonna keep the key in the off position. We're gonna open the hood and identify where the battery is so that we know how to align the other vehicle. Um, we've got a fairly long booster cable set, so we should be good, but we want to make sure that we're parked safely when we bring the second vehicle close by. So as is common in most of these vehicles, the hood latch is under the dash here on the left side. So we're going to release that. So we released the hood, but it hasn't actually opened. So we're going to have to just put our fingers in and see if we can get it to go a little bit more. And there it goes. So with every hood, there's a secondary latch that just keeps it from blowing open as you're going down the highway. So we're gonna reach in, find the lever. Some of them are a side to side release. Some of them are a lift release. So you do have to sort of feel around for it. It's usually on the driver's side ever so slightly. So we find that release. We're able to open this hood. Our hood brace is here. And we've got our battery here right in front of the driver's side. So this is where we're going to try and align the battery from the secondary vehicle so that we have enough distance to allow the cables to connect properly. So we'll get the second vehicle. So we've got our second vehicle up here. You can hear the noise in the background. We have our two batteries aligned. It's ideal for this one because this side, it's on the driver's side, and on our other vehicle, it's on the passenger side. So they can go nose to nose safely. Very important to make sure that you've got yourself parked safely. If you ever have a battery die out on a highway or something, you need to make sure that you're safe first. So we've got our booster cables here. Just untangle them a bit. And as we talked about before, little pro tip, just clip one and have this set aside. You don't want this on the metal of the vehicle at all because we're gonna to connect to a live battery over there. So even though it's in snow, it's better to leave this on the ground and make sure that the black and the red or the positive and the negative are not connected. <laughs> you don't wanna do that when they're connected. <laughs> so on this battery, we've got a positive and it's got a cover on it. Just an extra protection, and usually these will lift right up quite easily. We'll put our negative on the negative terminal. We've identified the positive and the negative, so we're putting the black on the negative, the red on the positive. Again, be careful that these don't touch the handles as you're putting this together. You want to make sure there's space. And this, now when it's connected, becomes a live conduit all the way through. Now this has a coating on it, but that coating can sometimes fail. So you don't want to be connected to the battery and then touching metal anywhere in the vehicle. This needs to sit free flow and not touch anything once you've connected. Make sure it's on well, give it a wiggle. You don't want it snapping off or bending or twisting, especially when you're pulling on these wires. So we've got this, and that means the cable now is somewhat live. We're gonna to go to the other car. Again, we're careful to connect these, keep them apart. We'll put the negative on the negative. And the positive, you can see it has a lift as well. Quite a bit going on here. This could be a connection issue because somebody's driven a screw into here almost to increase the torque and it's gooped up with a bunch of grease. So we could have other issues with this particular connection and maybe the battery is fine. Uh, we'll know in a minute. So all of this is live. So we're gonna take a clean spot or maybe kind of come up to this little bolt at the end. I'm gonna connect to that. And maybe we'll grab this one. 
Yep. Let's see if that gets us enough connection. Again, we need to be cautious where we put this because we don't really want these touching. Again, this is coated in plastic, so it's designed to not spark, but we don't want this to rest if this gets beat up or chipped. Now, something to remember. Many people say, hey, look, we have to leave it a while. One thing you want to consider, though, that battery is good. If we took that battery out and simply installed it in this vehicle, rest assured it would turn this vehicle over and it would start this vehicle. We know this. So all we're doing right now is we're capturing the power from that battery and putting it, frankly, directly into this starter. We're not putting it into the battery. We're putting it into the starter to turn the engine over. Okay, the engine will run with the alternator. Once the alternator is spinning, you get electricity to fire the spark plugs. So it's all about connection and the gauge of the cable. If we have a good gauged cable and good connections, this should start instantly. If it doesn't start instantly, come back out and recheck your connections, try different connections. That's really, really important. You should not, if with a good cable set, you should not need to let this charge a while. It should immediately pull the power from the other battery and that should be enough to turn over this engine. So let's give it a try. So it's not turning over the car. So we're gonna go back and we're gonna double check our connection. So I'm gonna start on this end because this positive terminal was a little bit corroded. So I wanna make sure I've got a good connection on this end to begin with. Now we're going to try on the other vehicle. Did I mention it's cold? This often happens when it's the coldest days. So making sure you have this connection really, really, really well done is important. So let's give it a try. We've adjusted both sides. Let's see if it worked. And there we go. We got her started. So it took a couple of adjustments. We finally got the adjustments clean and it started up. So now we get to safely take these cables off. We're gonna start with the positive cable. We're gonna hold it well clear and the negative cable. Now remember this is still live because it's connected to the other vehicle. Clip gently. We wanna clip gently because we don't wanna cause any of this to cut through. Set these down come to our other vehicle, positive off, negative, now we're free, we're clear, and we're going to reinstall the covers and to close the hood. <laughs> so our latch is frozen, this is very common. Now check out our other video on latches and we'll show you how to fix this. Now remember we had a damaged set of booster cables, so a good quality set of booster cables you want to look after. You want to put these away and keep them from getting corroded. We don't want the ends to corrode. We don't want exposed wires. We don't want any damage. So if you've got a good set, make sure you've got a nice dry place to store them, usually in the back of your vehicle, in the trunk, or in this case, we're going to put them in behind the back seat. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to be notified of our latest videos.